Hello, and welcome to another episode of Healthy Perspectives. My name is Vernon Solomon. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, tuberculosis, or TB as it's commonly called, is a disease caused by germs that are spread from person to person through the air. TB usually affects the lungs, but it can also affect other parts of the body, such as the brain, the kidneys, or even the spine. The good news is that since 1991, tuberculosis rates in the U.S. itself has declined, including the rates among healthcare personnel. But what do we really know about tuberculosis? In today's episode, we'll be discussing the causes, symptoms, treatments, and even the preventions of TB in adults. Healthy Perspectives. I'm your host, nurse and wellness coach Linda Saka, and our subject today is tuberculosis, a disease of the past or maybe not. We have a special guest, Dr. Terry Baker of Jamaica, who's with us today to talk to us about tuberculosis. Dr. Baker is an internist and pulmonologist. She's also a senior medical officer at the National Chest Hospital in Jamaica. She's an associate lecturer in the Department of Medicine at University Hospital in West Indies. She's a member of the Association of Consultant Physicians in Jamaica and uh, the European Respiratory Society and an affiliate member for the, with the American College of Chest Physicians. Welcome, Dr. Baker. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Let's start today's talk by um, asking you if you could explain what tuberculosis is. So tuberculosis is a disease uh, caused by a bacteria, bacterium, very long name, Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So many persons just call it tuberculosis or TB for short. And this is a bacteria that affects primarily the lungs, but it can indeed spread to every aspect, nearly every mm -hmm. aspect of the body. It can spread to the brains, the eyes, mm -hmm. it can go to the heart, the abdomen. It is a very slow growing bacteria, very insidious, but it is also very smart because mm -hmm. it has remained dormant. And as you said, we thought it was a disease of the past, but it has re-emerged as a scourge of the present. Uh -huh. Do we have any clue as to why it's re-emerging? So tuberculosis was here, when I say here, globally, mm -hmm. uh, quite, quite prevalent in the late 1800s, the early 1900s. We have, it was then called a scourge. We have cases in the Caribbean of thousands of persons dying each year mm -hmm. in the early 1900s because of tuberculosis. That is prior to the advent of medication to treat TB. After the advent of medication, the number of cases drastically decreased. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of persons, they have never seen anyone who mm -hmm. has had tuberculosis, uh, persons or even health professionals. However, with the emergence of HIV, mm -hmm. tuberculosis that had become dormant and was just lying there quiet has resurged and on the heels of HIV. So with HIV came immunosuppression and it is believed with this immunosuppression, dormant tuberculosis in some persons re-emerged as more active disease. Who is most likely to be effective as we see? Is it just um, people who are immunocompromised like the HIVs? So no, we know that persons who are immunocompromised are at greatest risk. Okay. So yes, persons who are living with HIV, persons who have diabetes, persons who may be on steroids, we use steroids to treat a number of, of disorders, uh, persons who may be getting chemotherapy because mm -hmm. of anti-cancer or treatment for other diseases, those persons are at risk. But in truth, so too are the elderly, 
so too are the very young, so too are persons who are malnourished. Anyone can actually get tuberculosis, but we do identify that there are certain persons who are at greater risk. You mentioned that in the late 1800s um, there was a high population of people that had tuberculosis. What about in this in the Caribbean or the world today? What are we seeing numbers-wise? So in the early early 2000s, about 2004, WHO actually declared tuberculosis a global epidemic. Really because of the number of cases we were now seeing. Wow. And we had millions of persons globally who would have been diagnosed and subsequently died because of tuberculosis. I want to underscore that even though we said persons who are immunocompromised are at greater, greater risk, truly we see it in all persons, mm -hmm. all persons, all walks of life. The numbers we are now seeing in the, in the latter or mid 2000, 2016, 2018, we see far less than 2004 because mm -hmm. there was a global effort mm -hmm. to try to eradicate this, this disease. However, we are still seeing numbers in the Caribbean. We have some countries that are of higher burden than others. Mm -hmm. So we know that our neighbors such as Suriname, Haiti, for example, mm -hmm. would be at risk. Uh, this, this being said, you have other countries, such as Jamaica, mm -hmm. from where I'm from, we have about anywhere from about 90 to 100 new cases each year. And then you have other countries within the Caribbean that have low numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, Antigua is one of them. So Antigua has reported annually roughly about two to five cases oh, each year. We have to look at different reasons. It can be population density. It can be socioeconomic living, mm -hmm. socioeconomic levels, as well as standards of living and where we see tuberculosis. I want to say that even though we mentioned tuberculosis within the Caribbean, there's no fear going to the Caribbean. There's no fear going to any no. country, right? Because we know too that even within a country, it is quite localized, meaning that you have certain areas that are at greater have higher pockets or greater numbers of tuberculosis. That makes me then want to ask you, how does one get tuberculosis? So tuberculosis is what we call an airborne disease, mm -hmm. somewhat similar to the flu or mm -hmm. the common cold. So someone who has what we call active tuberculosis, this is tuberculosis affecting, say, the lungs primarily or the pharynx, the voice box. If that person sneezes, sings, coughs, then the tuberculosis bacilli, the bacteria, mm -hmm. is aerosolized within the air, fine microsco microscopic droplets mm -hmm. that you can't see. But the person who is at risk would be those who are at frequent contact, closer contact, mm -hmm. so household members, that would then be breathing this contaminated air, mm -hmm. air contaminated with the the tuberculosis. So they then inhale it. Having inhaled the bacteria, not everyone will then progress to, to active disease. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at other circumstances. What is their general state of health? Are they at risk of getting any other disease? Are they immunocompromised? Mm -hmm. um, what is their age? What is their nutritional status? Are they smokers? Because we do know that persons who smoke are all at, so at increased risk oh, okay. of having tuberculosis, mm. you know? So that is, that is the, the risk. And then what the tuberculosis does is that it may be localized and then spread via the lymphatic system and the bloodstream to other parts of the body. Mm. So um, I guess that would be my next question. What would be the signs and symptoms a person coming into your office? What would you be looking for? <laughs> so. Interestingly, most of the cases of tuberculosis we're seeing now are re really what we call reactivated disease, meaning someone was exposed some time ago mm -hmm. and that disease was walled off by their immune system. Mm -hmm. However, circumstances within that, within that person's life may have changed. Um, they may have other illnesses that now predispose them and that tuberculosis oh. reemerges as active disease. 
One of the more common symptoms is a productive cough, a, a chronic cough lasting two, three weeks, more than two, three mm -hmm. weeks. Actually, we've had patients who have been coughing for months, mm -hmm. up to a year. There is a weight loss that is associated mm -hmm. with it, mm -hmm. the fever, the night sweats, the chills. Having said so, not everybody will have everything. And we need to be very mindful of this. Uh, some persons may just have the weight loss. Mm -hmm. So in somebody who is losing weight, the list is very long as to what the cause may be. So we have to consider everything, but we also have to remember in today's age, the possibility of tuberculosis. How is TB treated once you have, well, let's say, how would you make the diagnosis? That would be a good name. So once there's the index of suspicion, mm -hmm. the relevant samples need to be taken. And I say relevant samples because if someone's having a cough, mm -hmm. then we want to send sputum. Yeah. And it should be sputum and not spittle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? It needs to be sputum. At the lab will then do a smear mm -hmm. and see if they can detect the bacilli under the smear. Mm -hmm. However, not everybody will have what we call smear positive or the presence of the bacilli within the smear. Mm -hmm. So then that sample is sent for cultures. Cultures may take up to weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, if the person is having symptoms because of the tuberculosis being elsewhere, we need to sample that section. So you can have someone who has tuberculosis involved in the lymph nodes, mm -hmm. and they come with swollen, oozing lymph nodes of the neck. Mm -hmm. In that person, we need to send a sample of the what is oozing, what okay. is a purulent mm -hmm. discharge coming from the neck. You have persons who have tuberculosis of the spine. So sometimes really? we have to have orthopedic surgeons assist us wow. in getting samples. So we try to get samples and we send them off to the lab for testing, either smears, cultures, or we can also do look for DNA fragments under what we call PCR testing. We don't await for results to come back. Because mm -hmm. you may recall I said six to eight weeks for the cultures, we'd have to wait. And wow. during that time, once we suspect someone has tuberculosis, we start treatment while awaiting the results of the So what would the treatment be? So the good thing is that <laughs> tuberculosis, although it is such an insidious, slow-growing bacteria that can affect nearly every part of the body, it can be treated and it can be treated successfully, particularly if we get it within the earlier stages, okay. before mm -hmm. the, the bacilli, which I consider one of the smartest bacilli around, develops resistance. So we use antibiotics that are directed against tuberculo tuberculosis. Usually we start with four antibiotics, three which are bactericidal, mm -hmm. means those will kill the tuberculosis, mm -hmm. and another one which is bacteriostatic, sort of stunts its growth. Uh -huh. And we use at least three, sometimes four, because the tuberculosis bacilli quickly develops resistance. Uh -huh. So we need to approach it from different angles. And so we use those, those antibiotics, and we use them for a sufficient duration. The minimum time to treat active tuberculosis is six months. Wow. Mm -hmm. And some persons may need treatment up to a year. And that is what we call drug-sensitive tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. If we have drug-resistant tuberculosis, it may require treatment for two years or more. Wow. Um, I wanted to ask you another question, um, and that is, how long would a person be contagious? That's an excellent question. <laughs> an excellent question because there is such a fear mm -hmm. about tuberculosis. And yes, we need to be mindful. But someone who has started therapy quickly within the first two weeks, their bacterial load significantly reduces. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we test them to see mm -hmm. what their levels are, and labs have their ways of reporting it, of the bacilli is. But within two weeks, their levels are significantly reduced. And in some countries, actually, within the first two, three weeks, having done further testing, such persons can return to work, return to normal uh -huh. activities, yes, while they are monitored, and we, we need to be mindful that monitoring not only for recurrence of the disease, but monitoring to ensure that they are taking the medication as prescribed. 
If a case of TB has been reported, what action does our health department usually take? So one is to identify that person. Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned before, that person is often isolated, whether mm -hmm. it is admitted to a facility or some countries will, will isolate at home. But that person is isolated mm -hmm. and then having sent off the, the necessary specimens to be tested, treatment is started. Mm -hmm. So on suspicion, treatment is started while awaiting the results of the various tests to return. What is also done by the public health department mm -hmm. is to contact their close relatives, what we call their contacts. Mm -hmm. So it may not be everyone. Mm -hmm. We don't need to know that they were in the supermarket for 15 <laughs> minutes or they were on the bus because that duration of contact is quite short. Okay. So we're speaking about their co-workers, family it may be, members. family members, mm -hmm or if it is uh, infirmaries, uh, prison, mm -hmm. because yeah. we do have it in the prisons, mm -hmm. then we need to, to make contact with those persons who were spending sufficient time and uh, sufficient proximity to be at risk. Mm -hmm. They then would be tested for tuberculosis mm -hmm. because that's the risk of TB. For every case that becomes clinically apparent, that is diagnosed, there are potential 10 to other 15 persons wow. who would have been affected or infected. Okay. So even though the numbers in Antigua are small, you can think of that domino effect, yes. potential yeah. domino effect. And so to test it is just that simple skin test? So that simple skin test, or what we call the Mantu test, yeah. is a test that tells us exposure and possible infection. If it comes back positive, and we have different readings mm -hmm. depending on what category the person falls in mm -hmm. to determine if a p test is positive or not, if it comes back positive, then it may warrant further testing to determine does this person have active tuberculosis? This is tuberculosis that is transmissible, mm -hmm. contagious, mm -hmm. that person often has feels ill, mm -hmm. or is this what we call latent tuberculosis? Tuberculosis that has been sealed off mm -hmm. by the immune system. This person is not contagious. Mm -hmm. They are not a public health risk. And in these persons, treatment is not mandatory. Oh, that's good. Well, thank you so much for enlightening us on this subject that's kind of reared its head again. Mm. Yes. This is AUA Healthy Perspectives. We've been talking about tuberculosis with Dr. Terry Baker of Jamaica. Thank I, you again. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Asthma is a fatal disease with serious consequences, especially during an asthma attack. Knowing what to do in this situation can be crucial to saving your life. First, when having an asthma attack, stay calm and take deep breaths while standing straight up. Second, take your reliever or rescue inhaler immediately and take one or two puffs. Continue to breathe steadily. Third, sit down and ensure any tight clothing is loosened. However, do not lie down. If there is not immediate improvement, take another one or two puffs of your reliever or rescue inhaler. If your symptoms do not improve in a few minutes, call emergency services or go to your nearest hospital. Do not wait until it's too late. Control your asthma. Do not let it control you. This message was brought to you by American University of Antigua College of Medicine Asthma League. So we know that TB bacteria are spread through the air from one person to another. When a person with TB of the lungs or throat coughs, speaks, or sings out loud, people nearby may breathe in these bacteria and become infected. Those at high risk for developing TB disease include people with the HIV infection, people who became infected with the TB bacteria in the last two years or so, babies and young children, people who inject illegal drugs, people who are sick with other diseases that weaken or compromise their immune system, elderly persons, persons who were not treated correctly for TB in the past may all be at risk. I encourage you to please speak with your healthcare professional if you suspect that you or someone you love or are close to has the TB disease. Take care of yourself. We thank you for spending some time with us and for allowing us to share healthy perspectives with you. Be well, Antigua and Barbuda, and may your perspective always be a healthy one.
When it comes to your health, there are many options, but which do you choose? Your choice is going to be determined largely by your view on what being healthy really is. We at AUA place a high degree of importance on health and education, so we've created this program to provide you with solid information that would facilitate your decisions regarding your health. Join us for AUA's Healthy Perspectives, hosted by Vernon Solomon of the American University of Antigua.